Hello everyone, I welcome you all in uh, uh, fourth lecture of biomolecules. Uh, before going to the lecture content, uh, I would like to give a recap of uh, you know uh, last classes and uh, uh, we have in the uh, we have discussed already in the last class uh, regarding the structural formulas of uh, monosaccharide. Uh, we have also dis discussed about the pyran structure, we have discussed about the furan structure and uh, muta rotation and uh, glycoside formation. So, uh, let us continue with the glycoside formation. Uh, in glycoside formation, we discussed about the treatment of alpha D glucose with uh, methanol in presence of HCl. So, as we know alpha D glucose has a polyhydroxy group in its framework in presence of methanol and hydrochloric acid. it forms two glucosides methyl alpha D glucopyronoside and methyl beta D glucopyronoside. So, CH3 HCl and what happens basically one molecule of water come out of from the molecule to make it more clear I will use the color code while making the structure so that you can understand the changes happening in the you know sugar moiety. So, this is the main scaffold and changes happening here at the anomoric position and it forms methyl alpha D glucopyranoside methyl alpha D glucopyranoside side. Its melting point is 165 degree centigrade and specific rotation which is denoted by alpha D 25 is plus 158 the other product is methyl beta D glucopyranoside which is very much similar to the alpha D glucopyranoside. However, methoxy group here attached with the anomeric carbon at the you know equatorial position. So, again I will use color code to make it more clear here it becomes this is methyl beta D glucopyranoside. Melting point is 107 degree centigrade and specific rotation is negative 33. Now, you can see here these both molecule has formed from the same static material only difference is position of uh, OCS3 that methoxy group in one case it is equatorial in the alpha D glucopyranoside and in the other case it is equatorial in one case axial in the alpha D glucopyranoside and in uh, beta D glucopyranoside it is equatorial. Carbohydrate uh, generally these are called acetals and uh, carbohydrate acetals are generally uh, called acetals 
are called glycosides and that's why here i have named methyl alpha d glucopyranocide pyran is the six membered ring in both the cases and alpha is the position of reflects the position of methoxy group so methyl alpha d glucopyranocide methyl beta d glucopyranocide so carbohydrate esters are called glycosides and an acetal of glucose acetal of glucose is called a glucoside glycoside is the general terminology and for the glucose it is glucoside glucoside similarly acetals of mannose are mannoside mannon side acetal of fructose fructose are fructoside so it is very much clear that carbohydrate in presence of uh, hcl gaseous hydrochloric acid and uh, alcohol forms glycoside and particularly in case of glucose we call them glucoside similarly for mannose mannose mannoside and for fructose fructoside what is the mechanism of this reaction so let's talk about the you know mechanism for this reaction mechanism for the formation of glycoside mechanism for the reaction what happens in presence of acid so here first i will draw glucose and in presence of acid so here i am adding this reaction is reversible here you can see this reaction is reversible so in presence of acid what happens that it takes proton from the acid and it forms protonated species so i will keep the whole structure same but the hydroxyl of a numeric position will get protonated and that will get converted to oh2 now it will have positive charge once it attains positive charge what happens that lone pair of oxygen of the pyron ring will assist in elimination of this water molecule and again the second step is also reversible if it is minus h2o it will give oxonium species you can see here now we get the oxonium species now this oxonium species which is sp2 hybridized have two phases for the attack and these two phase after the attack will give the corresponding two uh, you know glycosides uh, if 
attack is taking place from the beta phase, then it will give beta D glucopyranocyte and if attack is taking place from the alpha phase, then it will give you methyl alpha D glucopyranocyte. So, let us attack water molecule, again I will use the color code to make it very clear. So, if attack is taking place from the from the top phase and if attack is taking place from the bottom phase. So, if attack is taking place from the top phase, then it will give you corresponding beta D glucopyranocyte. Again, this one is reaction this reaction is reversible. So, let me draw the structure of the molecule. And it will go to the equatorial position. Now, this sp2 hybridize carbon becomes sp3 hybridized after the attack. And here again acid counter uh, base abstract this proton and leads to the removal of HA with the corresponding methyl beta D glucopyranocyte. So, one thing is very clear that the structure of product, the final product is completely dependent on that you know at what phase on this oxonium species that oxonium intermediate alcohol is attacking. So, this becomes methyl beta D glucopyranocyte. if it attacks from the bottom phase, so that I will write on the another page or I, I will continue here itself, if attack is taking place So, here you can see that I have put axial positive charge is there and again the counter base of the acid will abstract the proton from the corresponding compound minus H A will lead to the methyl alpha D glucopyranocyte. methyl alpha D glucopyranocyte. Now, again I will re-explain the mechanism of the reaction. What happened in the presence of acid, first protonation of the enumeric alcohol is taking place and 
then with the help of the ring oxygen removal of water molecule is taking place that lead to the formation of oxonium intermediate. Now, this oxonium intermediate have carbon which is sp2 hybridized where you know attack can take place from the bottom phase or from the top phase. If attack is taking place from the top phase then that leads to the formation of methyl D glucopyranoside and if attack is taking place from the bottom phase then it leads to the formation of methyl alpha D glucopyranoside. So, one thing I would like to mention that this attack, attack by alcohol oxygen occurs on either face of resonance stabilized carbocation. Carbocation. Now, glycosides are you can see here these all reactions are in equilibrium, they are all reversible. Here that attack of acid which leads to the removal of water molecule from the you know um, acetal and then a further attack by the alcohol, these all steps are reversible and that is why glycosides are stable in basic solution. Important point. glycosides are stable in basic solution. Because they are acetal and if we have acidic solution glycoside under can undergo hydrolysis to produce the corresponding sugar and alcohol as a side product. In acidic solution, acidic solution it gets hydrolyzed gets hydrolyzed to produce alcohol and sugar. The alcohol obtained here after the hydrolysis is known as A glycan. The alcohol obtained by hydrolysis hydrolysis of a glycoside. is known as A glycan. This point you need to remember that you know when uh, glycoside, glycoside get hydrolyzed it generates alcohol and which is known as A glycan. To make it more clear I would like to give you on a specific example. And there I am taking a very simple glycoside where the alcohol alkyl group is presented with the R. So, here I am not expressing the OR substituents, uh, you know. Uh, stereochemistry. Now, this gets hydrolyzed in the presence of acid and it will generate the sugar.
so and alcohol so this is sugar and this is a glycon a glycon now what is the mechanism for this a glycon formation if we go to the reverse uh, pathway what just now i discussed about the glycoside formation if we do the reverse uh, uh, chemistry then we can lead to the you know glucose molecule if we start with the you know uh, gluco uh, glucoside uh, and as well as alcohol so let's discuss the mechanism of uh, this hydrolysis so again i am taking methyl beta d glucopyranoside methyl beta d glucopyranoside in presence of uh, acid here i have taken you know hydronium hydronium ion that is you know uh, protonated water molecule as acid. So, it will take the proton and it will form the protonated methoxy substitution. Now, it gets protonated. Once it is protonated again, the ring oxygen will help in elimination of this, you know, protonated methoxy group in the form of methanol. So, again minus CH3OH that will generate the oxonium species as an intermediate. Now, again two possibility exist over here at this sp2 hybridized carbon. One that uh, attack can take place from the top face and other attack can take place from the bottom phase of the, uh, on this sp2 hybridized you know uh, carbon atom. So, again let me write water molecule which is available there in the reaction mixture from the top phase this is A and the other possibility if it attacks from the bottom phase. So, here also attack by water occurs on either face of the resonance stabilized carbocation. And this will lead to the corresponding hemiacetal, corresponding acetal. Again, this water molecule will be protonated and this will lose the H plus with the help of water molecule. Water molecule will take the proton and it will generate beta d glucopyranose
beta d glucopyranose. Beta d glucopyranose and same way if here if we add hydronium species then again it can get transferred to the corresponding protonated moiety which can go back to again corresponding resonance stabilized uh, carbocation. Here also I will like to add methanol just to show that you know these all reactions are reversible. Now the second possibility if attack takes place from the from the bottom face that will lead to the alpha D glucopyranose. In a similar way, first it will give the corresponding protonated species. and that will further get processed for the removal of H plus to give the you know alpha D glucopyranose. This alpha and beta this represents the orientation of hydroxyl group at the enomeric position. This has to be you know remember every time when I pronounce this symbol. So, this is uh, alpha D gluco pyranose. So, let me go through again. So, we started with the methyl D glucopyranoside in presence of hydronium species it gets protonated that step is also reversible and then uh, with the you know um, lone pair uh, push from the ring oxygen it liberates the methanol and generates the resonance stabilized carbocation which can be attacked from the top face or from the bottom face. If attack takes place for the water molecule from the top face that generates the beta D glucopyranose and if attack takes place from the bottom face then it generates uh, alpha D glucopyranose the hydrolyzed sugar moiety. As I discussed the concept of a glycan and alcohol uh, by the hydrolysis of uh, uh, glycoside. So, let me explain it again. Uh, here I am taking example of silicine, silicine a molecule it is a glycoside which has sugar as well as alcohol. So, let me write the structure of silicine. So, this is the sugar part and now I will use color code to represent alcohol part. This is carbohydrate mighty and this is A glycan moiety. This is A glycan moiety. 
Now I hope you understand that you know uh, when we will do hydrolysis, it will generate the this aryl alcohol and corresponding sugar, this carbohydrate moiety, and this in total is known as uh, glycoside. This is a glycoside, which by hydrolysis can generate sugar as well as alcohol. Now, I would like to discuss about the enomeric effect. What is the enomeric effect? Uh, so, enomeric effect. We saw that beta D glucose is more stable, beta D glucose is more stable than alpha D glucose, than alpha D glucose. Let me explain it again. Why beta D glucose is more stable? Let me take the structure here these two is structure, first I will take. So, here you can see that in the case of beta D glucopyranose, hydroxyl group is staying quite open, it does not have interaction with the other substituent. So, it will have less strain in this scaffold, whereas in the case of alpha D glucopyranose, there are substituents, this hydroxyl group is there, this H is there, this has certain steric reservation alpha D glucopyranose and that is the reason beta D glucose in the cyclic form is more stable uh, than the alpha D glucose. So, here in the beta D glucose hydroxyl is oriented in the equatorial position whereas in the alpha D glucose hydroxyl is oriented at the axial position. However, the preference for the OH group for the equatorial position equatorial position is not as large as expected, as large as expected. Why is it so? If we see in the alpha D glucose, hydroxyl is axial and it has steric uh, you know component in it, whereas in the case of beta D glucose, it has very minimal you know steric and it should be, it, it is stable. So, population of beta D glucose should be very high, but in the reality relative amounts relative amounts of beta D glucose. and alpha D glucose is 2 is to 1. Relative amounts of beta D glucose and alpha D glucose are 2 is to 1. Why, why so much you know uh, still preference for the alpha D glucose? We can understand it by comparing with the cyclohexanol. Let us take example of cyclohexanol. Cyclohexanol, here if we take beta as well as alpha cyclohexanol. In this case, relative amounts for the equatorial and axial is 5.4 is to 1. Here we have huge difference. You can see that in the equatorial it is 5.4 and here is to 1. That cyclohexanol mixture has this is the ratio. Whereas in the case of glucose, 
uh, it is 2 is to 1. So, in the case of glucose, still we have preference for the alpha D glucose, whereas in the case of you know cyclohexanol, we have used preference for the you know uh, equatorial hydroxyl group. Therefore, there must be a factor which is governing for the alpha uh, glucose formation. What is that factor? Let us discuss about that. When glucose reacts, reacts with an alcohol to form glucoside. Alcohol to form uh, glucoside glucoside major product is the alpha glucoside major product is the alpha glucoside alpha glucoside because acetal formation is reversible as I showed in the mechanism that was the reason I was explaining the mechanism. Uh, so, first alpha glucoside forms as a major product and then again because of the reversibility it gets equilibrated with the beta glucoside. The alpha glucoside now the it supports the hypothesis that alpha glucoside side must be more stable than the beta glucoside. Than the beta glucoside. The preference of certain substituents bonded to the enumeric carbon for the axial position is called now to explain this phenomena I am introducing this concept. So, uh, the preference of certain substituents the preference for certain substi substituent substituents bonded to the enumeric carbon for the axial position is called the enumeric effect. Now, let me explain it. enumeric effect. I have introduced the terminology of enumeric effect. What is this enumeric effect? Because that, that only can suggest that why so much preference is there for the alpha D glucose. Uh, as I, al I have already mentioned that uh, formation of uh, alpha glucoside is uh, more during the reaction in comparison to the beta glucoside even uh, we know that there is a steric component in the alpha glucoside and since the reaction is reversible it equilibrate to the corresponding 2 is to 1 mixture which I you know uh, mentioned uh, uh, for the you know glucoside formation uh, for the you know um, hydrolyzed glucose uh, um, uh, composition. So, let me explain this enumeric effect. What is this enumeric effect? Again, I will draw the chair conformation of the pyron. Here, if I keep a substituent at the axial position and let me draw another chair conformation where I will keep the substituent at the enumeric carbon at the equatorial position. In the first case, oxygen is having two orbitals for the lone pair, axial these are the axial lone pair 
axial lone pair. Now, this anti bonding orbital of the this axial substituent which is empty is parallel with the axial lone pair of the pyrone uh, oxygen. Similarly, I will draw orbitals of the equatorial attached uh, structure. Now, in the equatorial attached structure, anti bonding empty orbital is not parallel to the lone pair orbitals. Now, what is responsible for the anomeric effect? If the substituent is axial, one of the ring oxygen lone pair is parallel to the anti bonding orbital of this you know uh, sigma bond, anti bonding orbital C j bond, the molecule then can be stabilized by hyperconjugation. Whereas, in the equatorial attached structure, the anti bonding sigma star orbital which is empty is not you know parallel to the lone pair orbitals and hence the electron cannot be transferred through the hyperconjugation. This phenomena which strengthens the formation of uh, you know uh, alpha uh, glucoside is called like you know uh, anomeric effect which is not possible in the equatorial whereas it is possible in the axial. Now, I will talk about the reducing and uh, non-reducing sugars. Reducing and non-reducing sugar. Because glycosides are acetal, they are not in equilibrium with the open chain. They are always in the you know uh, cyclic form. Without being in equilibrium with a compound that has a uh, carbonyl group, they can be oxidized by the uh, tolerance reagent and glycoside therefore are non reducing sugars glycosides are non reducing sugar glycosides are non reducing sugar why is it so as i mentioned that glycosides are acetal they are not in equilibrium with the open chain aldehyde or ketone in aqueous solution and without being in equilibrium with a compound that has a carbonyl group, they cannot be oxidized by tolerance reagent. Glycosides therefore are not re non-reducing sugars, they cannot be reduce the oxidizing reagent. Hemiacetal on the other hand are in equilibrium. Are in equilibrium with the open chain. Equilibrium with the open chain. equilibrium with the open chain. So, they can reduce the oxidizing agent. So, they can reduce the oxidizing reagent. Reagent and therefore, is classified as reducing sugar.
reducing. Let me explain again. Glycosides are acetal, they are not in equilibrium with the open chain aldehyde R ketone. And that is why you know these compound since does not have uh, aldehyde R ketone as a carbonyl group, they cannot be oxidized by tolerance reagent. And hence they are called non-reducing sugar whereas in the case of hemiacetal which can easily equilibrate into the open chain aldehyde or ketone form they can be you know oxidized by a uh, tolerance reagent and hence they are called the reducing sugar. Now, an acetal is a non-reducing sugar. An acetal is a non-reducing sugar. Again, point to remember is glycosides are non-reducing sugar because they cannot convert into the you know open chain uh, compound which has carbonyl in its framework. Hence, they are called non-reducing sugar whereas hemiacetal which can easily get transformed to the open chain compound which has carbonyl in its framework either aldehyde or ketonic group and then they can get oxidized by the tolerance reagent and that is why they are called reducing sugar. Now, to make you understand this in a better way, I will like to uh, give you an example from uh, our day to day life that you know we, we, we all are hearing about the you know diabetes, you know it is a lifestyle disease and uh, you know uh, here it has become very common you know in every family we, we, we are uh, learning that you know X is getting uh, diabetes in a very early age uh, which was not earlier uh, so much. I believe that you know at some point our lifestyle is uh, you know um, getting responsible uh, for this so, such a early detection of uh, uh, diabetes. For the diabetes test you know we generally measure the blood uh, sugar level in our body. So, how does it happen uh, basically? Let us discuss about that. We can understand this you know uh, in a more elaborated way. So, measuring the blood glucose level in diabetes. blood glucose levels in diabetes. How do we measure the blood glucose level? The objective here is just to get aware with the reduce again with the reducing sugar and the non-reducing sugar. I just now discussed that you know what is reducing sugar and what is non-reducing sugar. Same concept again I will bring here. So, glucose in the blood stream reacts with glucose in the blood stream reacts with reacts with an amine group amine group amine group of the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin to form at an amine. It is a simple uh, reaction of carbonyl with the amine group 
and that e means subsequently subsequently undergoes an irreversible rearrangement. undergoes an irreversible rearrangement. Irreversible rearrangement to a more stable alpha amino ketone, alpha amino ketone known as hemoglobin A 1 c. Hemoglobin A 1 c. Now, I will write it in the equation form same reaction. So, here I am writing open chain form of glucose this reacts with the amine of hemoglobin in presence of trace acid as for the here uh, water molecule is coming out. So, trace acid is already there in the biological system. Hemoglobin Now, this will go for the rearrangement. Meant and it will get converted to corresponding amine. This amine will get converted to corresponding amine CH2 NH hemoglobin and this internal alpha position hydroxyl will get converted to the carbonyl this molecule is known as hemoglobin a1c thus measuring the hemoglobin a1c Label is a way to determine whether the blood glucose level of diabetic patient is being controlled or not. So, whatever because it will it will get it will form from the you know glucose available in the blood stream by this reaction that hemoglobin amine will react and it form the hemoglobin A1C. This one label determines that you know how much sugar is available there in the blood glucose. And by knowing that we can easily control the our diet and that way we can know that you know how much amount is needed. If you are we are taking excessive intake then we have to cut down. So, uh, this this is our uh, in day to day life where like you know basically what is happening here hydroxyl is getting oxidized through this rearrangement to the corresponding carbonyl uh, to form the hemoglobin A 1 c. This is the reaction taking place uh, while measuring the blood glucose level. Uh, in uh, uh, diabetic patient. Uh, uh, now, I will stop here. So, um, today we discussed about the basically uh, various uh, type of uh, reactions. First, we talked about the uh, formation of uh, you know uh, glycoside and uh, uh, then we discussed its mechanism. Then again, we discussed about the uh, you know uh, reducing and uh, uh, non reducing sugars and then we talked about the uh, how uh, one can uh, you know measure the level of glucose in the blood stream by 
reacting it with the uh, hemoglobin amine uh, which get by the rearrangement uh, gets converted to the corresponding amino ketone. And we generally uh, while measuring blood glucose level we measure that uh, label in the uh, um, uh, diabetic patient's body. Okay. Thank you very much. We will again continue with the uh, next.